The day is not far when you'll see a headline on the newspapers and TV that goes like Neuralink makes history with the success of first ever human trials. And with that, the humans will gain power to control the human mind. Let's check on this. As terrifying and surprising it sounds, Neuralink, founded by Elon Musk, has embarked on the first ever human trials of its revolutionary brain machine interface technology. The ambitious venture aims to bridge the gap between the human brain and artificial intelligence, opening doors to unprecedented possibilities for medical treatment, communication, and human argumentation. It's indeed a groundbreaking leap towards merging technology with the human mind. Human clinical trials for Neuralink's precise robotically implanted brain-computer interface study have now been initiated. This medical device trial aims to empower people with paralysis by allowing them to control internal devices using their thoughts through a wireless brain-computer interface. Unlike existing brain-computer interfaces that record signals from human brain using only a few channels, Neuralink's approach involves recording from thousands of channels. This expanded capacity promises more precise and comprehensive communication between the brain and external devices. Elon Musk has always turned heads with his inventions, decisions, and tweets. And Neuralink is also Elon Musk's baby. For the unknown, Neuralink Corporation is a neurotechnology company founded by Elon Musk in July 2016. The goal of Neuralink is to create direct communication pathways between the human brain and external devices or computers. By doing so, the company aims to address neurological disorders, improve cognitive abilities, and enable new forms of human-computer interactions. The key product developed by Neuralink is a brain-implanted device known as the Link. The Link consists of a small chip containing a large number of electrodes, which are surgically implanted into the brain. These electrodes are designed to both record neural activity and stimulate specific areas of the brain. The high precision and density of the electrodes enable a more nuanced and direct interaction with neural signals. Neuralink's initial focus has been on medical applications, particularly in the treatment of neurological conditions such as paralysis and various brain-related disorders. By establishing a direct interface between the brain and external devices, Neuralink aims to provide solutions for restoring lost motor functions and addressing other neurological challenges. The company has also discussed the potential for broader applications beyond medical use, including enhancing cognitive abilities, facilitating direct communication between individuals, and enabling a closer integration of humans with artificial intelligence. Until last year, Neuralink had been conducting experiments and trials primarily with animals. The announcement of human trials, as mentioned in the news, would represent a significant step forward in realizing the company's ambitious goals. Human trials are no joke. But how do you actually control someone's brain and its activity? Bradley Greger, an associate professor of neuroengineering at Arizona State University, has been closely following Neuralink's progress. He emphasizes the potential impact of this technology, stating this technology is going to be such a game-changer. Gregor himself has worked on restoring vision and speech using brain-computer interfaces and is currently researching deep brain stimulation, or the DBS, with patients with movement and pain disorders. Here are some insights from Gregor regarding Neuralink's prime study. Number 1. Accessibility for researchers Researchers worldwide are eager to get their hands on Neuralink's technology. However, its accessibility will ultimately depend on Neuralink's decisions. Number 2. Partnerships with Research Hospitals Neuralink has already partnered with a major neurosurgical center in the United States for the first patient study. The specific hospital remains undisclosed to protect patient privacy. Gregor believes Neuralink will likely collaborate with additional neurological research institutions, seeking those with surgical expertise and strong support infrastructure. Number 3. FDA Approval Process While the technology and procedures are already FDA approved, Partnering institutions will go through their own institutional review board process. Major hospitals with proven track records in this type of research are likely candidates for collaborations. Neuralink's prime study makes a significant step towards bridging the gap between the human brain and external devices. As the trial progresses, we can anticipate further breakthroughs in neurotechnology and its potential to transform lives. The initiation of human trials marks a critical milestone in Neuralink's journey. The trials involve a secret group of participants, each volunteering to have Neuralink's brain implant, known as the link, placed within their brains. During the trials, participants undergo careful monitoring and assessment to ensure the safety and efficacy of the Neuralink's technology. The focus is primarily on the restoration of motor function in individuals with paralysis, with potential applications extending to various neurological conditions. So let's just put it this way. Hampering with something natural will definitely have its plus and minus, right? So while we focus on Neuralink's positives, we can't ignore the negatives. What could be the potential impact on neurological disorders? 
Neuralink's foray into human trials offers hope to millions around the world suffering from neurological disorders. By directly interfacing with the brain, the technology has the potential to restore lost functionalities, paving the way for significant advancements in treating conditions such as paralysis, epilepsy and even neurodegenerative diseases. Moving on to the next most thought question, what about the ethical considerations and privacy concerns? As with any groundbreaking technological advancement, Neuralink's human trials raise ethical considerations and privacy concerns. Issues surrounding consent, data security, and the potential misuse of neural information must be carefully addressed to ensure the responsible development and deployment of brain-machine interface technology. The success of Neuralink's human trials could herald a new era of human-machine symbiosis. Beyond medical applications, the technology may offer enhanced cognitive abilities, improved memory, and faster communication. However, it also prompts discussions about the potential societal impact, ethical boundaries, and the need for comprehensive regulatory frameworks. Neuralink's launch of the first human trial is a momentous step towards realizing a future where humans and artificial intelligence coexist harmoniously. The outcomes of these trials have the potential to reshape medicine, redefine human capabilities, and propel society into uncharted territories. As we witness the historic endeavor unfold, it is crucial to balance enthusiasm with a thoughtful consideration of the ethical and societal implications, ensuring that the benefits of Neuralink's technology are harassed responsibly for the betterment of humanity. With the news of human trials, patients with neurological disorders, especially those facing challenges such as paralysis or severe motor impairments, may view Neuralink with a sense of application and hope. The prospect of a technology that could potentially restore lost functionalities or improve their quality of life could be seen as a beacon of optimism. On the other hand, patients and the broader public may express concerns and caution regarding the invasive nature of the technology. The idea of having a brain implant raises questions about safety, potential side effects, and the long-term impact on overall health. Ethical concerns related to consent, privacy, and the responsible use of neural data may also influence patient reactions. Patients and the general public may engage in discussions about the ethical and philosophical implications of Neuralink. This could involve debates about the boundaries between technology and humanity, the potential for unintended consequences, and the societal impact of widespread adoption. Concerns about accessibility and equality may also be voiced. Patients from diverse eco-socionomic backgrounds may question the availability and affordability of Neuralink technology, ensuring that the benefits of such advanced neurotechnology are accessible to a broad range of individuals. Patient advocacy groups may play a crucial role in voicing the concerns and expectations of those potentially impacted by Neuralink. The importance of informed consent and the need for transparent communication between the company and the patients will likely be emphasized. While the ultimate goal is to address neurological disorders, enhance cognitive abilities, and create a symbiotic relationship between humans and advanced technologies, we must know that Neuralink isn't alone in the market. Though it stands as a pioneering force in the development of brain-machine interface technologies and leads in that field, there are other research initiatives and companies undertaking similar concepts or related technologies. BrainGate is a notable research project with the objective of advancing brain-computer interface technologies. This project involves the implantation of microelectrode arrays into the brain, enabling individuals with paralysis to control external devices using their thoughts. Positive results from clinical trials have been reported. Kernel, founded by Brian Johnson, focuses on neurotechnology with an emphasis on developing non-invasive technologies for understanding and augmenting human cognition. Thought not as invasive as Neuralink, Kernel is working on devices that interface with the brain to enhance cognitive abilities. Control Labs, which was acquired by Meta and is now part of Facebook Reality Labs, was previously working on wrist-worn devices capable of interpreting neural signals associated with hand movements. This technology aimed to provide a non-invasive alternative to traditional brain-machine interfaces. OpenBCI is a company contributing to the field through the provision of open-source brain-computer interface hardware and software. The devices empower researchers, developers, and enthusiasts to explore and experiment with the brain signal processing. Emori specializes in electroencephalogram or EEG technology, offering headsets capable of reading and interpreting brain activity. Users can control devices or interact with virtual environments using their thoughts. It's important to recognize that the landscape of brain-machine interfaces is rapidly evolving, and new developments may have transpired since then. Furthermore, ongoing research in academia and other industries contributes to the expanding realm of neurotechnology as Neuralink progresses with human trials and potential future deployments. Ongoing engagement with patients, clear communication, and addressing ethical and safety concerns will be essential for building public trust and acceptance.
Hope you liked watching our video. If you enjoyed watching this video, then click on like and definitely subscribe to our channel. Share your ideas and views in the comment section below.